All right, so continuing with the copy to point series. In this one, we're gonna take a look at something very simple, but I made like a full project for it. So uh, we'll see how to scatter multiple objects over points uh, using like a variant attribute. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll just, uh, so I decided like, you know, we can probably do that using like a, like a terrain. So you'll just get some idea of how to do like scattering on terrains as well. Okay, so what I have is, I'll just duplicate a little bit of this, okay. Okay, so first of all, what I have is, I have like three objects. I have a box and I have a sphere and I have a tube and I have given them, uh, you'll need something called as a variant attribute. Actually, you can call it anything you want, but the default, it goes to variant. So you just, you know, give it a variant. So what you do is you just create an attribute at just uh, integer node and it'll create an attribute called variant. And we'll just give these uh, values, you know, so this is zero, like the box is zero, this is one, and this is two. So that's as far as what we want to do with this. Now on the other side, what we have is our height field. So I'm just going to show you fairly, you know, briefly, this is not a height field lesson, okay, but just to sort of go through it. So what I've done is I have like a pattern which is, uh, I've just taken like a, a round mask, okay, and then distorted it. So I have a mask which is just round, and then you just distort the whole thing, okay. And then I gave it a noise, like through the mask. So if I just remove that, see this is, you know, the whole noise. And then when you plug it in, you get a mask. And then uh, I kind of blurred it a little bit, and you can distort it a little bit, so you get like a little more, you know, pattern or it looks a little more natural. I gave it a slope mask. So let me, what I'll do is I'll just copy this much. Okay. So I'll just take this, do control C, control V. Okay. So once we, once we are here, what I usually like, if you want to do like very quick erosion, you can, uh, you can use a slump. Okay. So what you do is, uh, you do a mask by feature and you look for height field mask by feature and you just mask the slope. Okay. And then, uh, take a slump node. So you'll get something called height field slump. And that's pretty much it. Just increase the value. So everything sort of just, you know, goes down. You can adjust the repose angle, which is like, so it sort of treats the mask as like dirt and it just falls, you know, down. Okay. So you can sort of just define like how much it should fall. And then along with this, I will also add, uh, if you want, you can store this. Okay, like if you maybe later on you want to use it for texturing or something, we can store it. So the way to do that is do a copy layer. So you do a copy uh, layer. Yes, yeah, so you'll get something called high field copy layer. And you just like, it's, it'll take the mask and you, let's let's call it slump. Okay, and then uh, I'll also give it like, I'll, I want a little more detail on it. So I'll take a height field flow field. So I'm not going to do erosion, you know, like this is just faster. And uh, you can define, like you can define rain amount and you can define uh, rain density. And we can also smoothen it out if we want. And we'll also adjust height. So it kind of like, you know, goes, like if you, if you look at it, see it sort of, it acts like displacement. And then I can also do a slump on this. Okay, so I can just do control C, control V and do like a further sort of slump. So we can sort of, you know, like take that and bring it down. And if we want, we can also like, actually let's do one thing, let's just store this. Yeah, and then we can clear it. So just do a clear. So we'll do height field mask clear. And there you go. So this is what it looks like. Like this is without the slump. Okay, like if I bypass it, see, and this is with. So it just takes everything, like we can see it, like you can define like the repose angle, see. So you can see like the dirt sort of coming down. Okay, so once we've done that much, now what I want to do is I just want to create a couple of masks. Like, let me just, let me just pick up another flow field just for fun. So I'll do another height field. You can add as many as you want, like it doesn't matter. So uh, the flow field uh, anyways will be stored. Like it should be there somewhere. Where is it? Yeah, so there you go. So you have you have the flow field, you know, so the, these are all the fields that you've stored. So the slump is sort of stored in there, the mask is there, and then the flow is there. Okay, okay so now we just want to create a few masks. 
uh, to scatter our points. Okay, so I'm going to take a mask by feature. And let's say I just want to create something. Uh, sorry, wrong one. I always take yeah, a mask by feature. Yeah, height field mask by feature. And what you want to do is, let's say I just want to, I want to select like the ground areas. Okay, so I'll just take this. Yeah, let me just, I'll bring this down. I'll bring this one down as well. And hold on. Yeah, just take this. Yeah, so do, do it like that. Okay. And we can define like how much we want. Yeah, so this is good. Okay, now what I can also do with this is uh, you have some stuff coming to the top. Okay, so let's say I want to get rid of that. Okay, like I don't want like trees on these areas, like based on height. Okay, so I can take another uh, height field mask by feature. I'll set this one to height. So we'll just do compute range. And uh, like this will be one. So it'll be like this. And then you just do a subtract over here. See, so what you've done is you've subtracted everything from top. Now let's say we let's say for fun we also want to subtract the the flow field from this. Okay, so we'll we'll define like wherever there is the flow field. I don't want any trees or anything over there. So you can take a wrangle node. So take a height field wrangle, and we have like uh, at so let's so just to show you what's going to happen. If we, if you say at mask is equal to one, you'll see that you've masked everything. So we can do at mask. We can like let's say if I say at flow. So you'll get this. Uh, let's generate a better flow field. So we can just do a flow field because this is like it's modified because of the slump. So we can take another flow field that will look better. Okay, so we'll just plug it in. Yeah, see, so that's a better flow field. So we'll say height field flow field and uh, we'll say at, we'll do at mask minus at flow. And see, so what's happened is that wherever you had the flow, that's been removed from the mask. So it looks, the mask looks better. And then I can save this. So we'll do copy, height field copy layer, and we can save this. And we'll call this as, let's call it base. Okay, and then I want to do this again. Uh, I'll take this, I'll take uh, all three of these, Control C, Control V. And I want to select like higher area. So I'll take this, and we want to go higher till about there, yeah. And what we want is like this. So let's say like here we'll have like uh, different types of trees. Okay. And I can just take this. Yeah. Okay. So that looks nice. So again, with the height field, we can subtract off, you know, the tops that we don't want. So I can define like, so let's say I want it like, I don't want it on this area, like the absolute peaks. So here it's fine. Like I can bring it up till about there. Okay, and then the same thing, I can take the flow field and subtract it from that. Okay, let's do one thing. Uh, okay, so subtract it and then we can we can remap this, you know, to just, just to make it a little more, you know, like it's faded out a lot in certain areas. So let's do like a compute range, uh, sorry, mask. Yeah, I think this is this is okay. Yeah, like it's a little better than what we were getting. Like this is too faded out, you know. So this is this is better. So what this does is it allows us to like have like these streams and there won't be any trees or anything over there. Okay, so this is good. So we have our two masks. Uh, this is the one for the base, and then this is for the slopes. And they'll sort of mix together, so it'll look interesting. Okay, and then I can do the same thing. I'll do like a copy layer. And let's call this as slopes. Okay, so now uh, we want to scatter some points on this. Okay, so we can take a scatter and you'll get something called as height field scatter. Okay, and uh, plug in the mask also in here. Actually, let's clear the mask because we have those stored. So we'll just do mask clear. And the mask layer will be called base. So there you go. So you have like these nice little like the flow fields, you know, disappearing from those points. So what you can do is if you lower the coverage, you can lower the number of points. Uh, if you lower the outer radius, it'll add more points because it's like the distance between things. Okay. And then you can also just like the, the fall off. 
So yeah, so don't generate like too many points. But let's say like before this, I want to do something else, which is, uh, let's say I want to have like, I don't know, like rocks or something. And then uh, the tree shouldn't be where the rocks are. Okay, so I'll just take this. Let's take the coverage. Yeah, let's lower the coverage to like a lot. And let's also take the, this is the size of the particle, okay, or the points. So we'll make it about one by four. Yeah, so those are like pretty big. And we'll make it 0 0.1. Yeah, just increase the outer radius. So just, you have like a few of these. Let's get outer radius to four. Okay, I think this is, this is fine. Now, we'll also create a group out of this. So I'll take a group and I'll call it uh, rocks. And this will be points. So we've selected like these guys. Okay, and then uh, we take another scatter and uh, another height field scatter. And this also will, you know, come in here. But, uh, and we keep the mask to uh, base. And what will happen is it automatically checks the previous points and generates like a radius around it. And that radius is based on the values kept here. Okay, so if let's say I make it like three, so you'll see like, you know, that that size becomes smaller or that size becomes bigger. Or if I make it like 0 0.5, you'll get more of these. But see, so like the ones with 0 0.5, the circle is a lot smaller and then the bigger ones, the circle is more. And now I want to create something for the slopes. So I'll do that separately. Like I won't do it in this. Okay, even though you can, but it'll just get too messy. Okay, so what we'll do is I'll take another height field scatter, which should come here. And this will use uh, slopes. So there you go. And uh, again, I'll just lower the coverage a little bit. What you can also do here is uh, you can also do things like you can randomize the up and randomize the yaw. You know, so that looks a little better. Like we can do that here as well. Okay, and now uh, let's create a group for this also. So I'll create a group here. I'll call this as slopes. We'll also color them. Okay, so what I can do is I can take, uh, like here, once this much scattering is done, you can come into this point and say, uh, turn off, keep incoming terrain. And we can just do a blast here. Or we can do a split. Yeah, so just do a split and we can split the rocks. There you go. So we have the rocks and then we will have the these are the base points and these are the slope points. Okay, uh, let's also give them some color. So what I can do is I can just take a uh, attribute it just float and we can set this to, uh, what can we set it to? Let, let just give it a, give it something. I'll call it like random and do set always and set this to, set this to random and then take a color node and we will do ramp from attribute uh, random there you go okay and then we can just define a color so let's say this will be yeah so we'll go to like a light green and then do a control c control b over here and these will be slightly different so we'll make them more towards like a more towards blue okay so now that everything is done we just need to give these values so we can scatter points on, we can scatter our objects on them. Take an attribute just integer and we will start giving them value. So this is the, these are the rocks. Let's say this is zero. Okay, we'll do set always. These are the, these are the base points. So this will be one. And then these are the slopes. So this will be two. And we can merge these together. And uh, yeah, see, there you go. You have like a nice little, you know, distribution on this. Let's give it a color. Let's give some color to this as well. And take a copy to points. Uh, before you start copying stuff, just do one thing. Turn on pack an instance because otherwise what will happen is we have like a, a shit ton of points. So if you, if you start copying something heavy on it, it will just crash your entire system. So just turn on copy to points. So it will make sure, sorry, turn on pack an instance. So it will make sure that everything is packed before it brings it in. Turn on the piece attribute and call it variant. And if you've done everything right, it should just work. Okay, so I'll just take this and I'll just do like control C, control V, bring this in here, move this to a side. Yeah, and if you plug this in, 
everything should automatically come into place. There you go. See. So what happens is uh, if we merge it with our height field, you will see this. So if I take a merge here and yeah, we'll take in this guy. There you go. See, so it's fitting very nicely with the flow field and uh, we can also adjust the color. I think this one should be a little more darker or, you know, more push towards blue. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. That looks better. And uh, we can also do like other things on this. So uh, let me just take this box, make it slightly smaller. Yeah. Okay. So these are supposed, those are supposed to be the rocks. So one of the things is like the trees are all kind of, you know, uh, aligning themselves to the normals. If you don't want that to happen, you can come into your scatter and there is an option called match normals with terrains, turn that off. So that will make sure that, you know, like the trees stand properly. I can also take this, these trees, make them slightly bigger. I can take these guys, make them slightly smaller. And uh, for some reason, the height field visualize is not working. Okay. So I can take a uh, convert. So I'll convert this. I'll convert the height field to standard geometry. And then I can take a color and we can color this based on the flow field. So I'll do like ramp from attribute and I'll pick up the flow field. And there you go. See, so you'll have like, so what I can do is I can take uh, this guy and maybe make it like blue or something. So you'll have like water over there, something like that. And then this guy can be just a, you know, like a gray or something. Or you can make it green, you know, that wouldn't be bad either. Okay. So we can make it like a dark green or something. Not the best of things to do, but uh, yeah, I think the blue looks nice. You know, like you, if you look at it from top, it looks decent. And you can have multiple variants. Like if, this is just three, but let's say if you have like multiple pine trees, then for the pine trees, uh, scatter points, we can create like a random range from let's say four to seven or like four to six. So you can give those, the pine trees can have numbers like four, five, and six. So they will scatter just in this area. And then for the uh, trees at the bottom, we can have like, you know, say one, two, and three, you know, so that will get like different trees happening here. So you can kind of adjust and match, you know, whichever way you want, and it'll give you like different results. Okay, so before I close this, just as another small tip, you can also randomize the P scale if you want, because the default P scale is just picking up based on like the radius of the points that is coming in from like the scatter. So what we can do is that once you've done, you know, all your variants and everything, we can put in another float here. So I can take an add with just float and I can set it to, uh, we can set add and I can set it to random. So see, there you go. So you can actually like, you know, randomize this or if you want, uh, we can try to do like a multiply. See, so you can actually just, you know, adjust these a little bit more. So I can copy paste this over here as well. Or you can set it to like a noise map. So that will be different. So we can pick up like a noise pattern. You'll just have to increase the size of it a fair bit in order to see it. You know, like it looks fine like this as well. But uh, let's say if I take the element size to about 60, see, then you start to see the noise map. Yeah, there you go. See, so that that makes it feel look a little more natural than, you know, just leaving it the way it is. OK, so that's pretty much it. So this is uh, how you can use copy to points to scatter like multiple objects over a set of points and just a small project on how you can use that. OK, as a final, like uh, because this is pretty low res, that's mostly because our height field is pretty low res. So if you get the grid spacing down to about one, it will look better. It'll take a little longer to calculate, but it'll look better. Anyways, that's, see, there you go. Ooh, that actually looks nice. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. So this is, you know, the whole project.